Hey, many fish. It's the 22nd October 2017. And uh, once again, I'm, I'm led to the uh, financial stuff again. But before I get into that, I just want to let you all know that the video I did on this little Google gadget here, uh, I was calling it the sun that was leaving Libra when, in fact, I guess it's the moon. I, I Somebody pointed that out. A couple people did, and I thank you. And I apologize if that aspect of my video messed up anybody's understanding or a timeline or confused anyone. I truly apologize for that. But, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm aware of that. And but we went over this. This is just this this really hit me pretty heavy. So I'm kind of kind of excited. I mean, if there's any such possibility, right? But Wall Street. Furious over proposal to slash 401ks, okay? And, of course, I see the, that adds up to 222, which we saw a lot of twos in, the, in a couple videos ago when I was talking about the financials, which I don't typically like, but here we are. And these two guys here in this image are wearing 21 and 212. And immediately, I think, 2112. And one thing I don't do enough is look up words in the concordance. So I did. 2112 in the Hebrew means to shake with fear, tremble. Okay? And in the Greek, it means directly, at once, soon, immediately, straightway, forthwith. Okay? Tremble with fear and forthwith, straightway immediately and it's used 82 times in the entirety of the bible but only twice in the old testament and those two times it's occurring there are both the hebrew translation and these are the only hebrew translation that are in daniel and so i start at the top and i'm reading daniel daniel 5 and this talks about when uh, belshazzar takes over for Nebuchadnezzar and he's not a good guy and he parties and he breaks out the vessels that came from the temple in Jerusalem and he starts using them to party with and that's not good and the hand of God comes out and writes on the wall the wall okay and he can't figure out what it says He's scared, and he knows it's something serious. But his magicians and his astrologers and his soothsayers and his Chaldeans can't figure it out. But it's brought to his attention that Daniel, Daniel, who his father admired very much, could translate it for him. And, uh, you know, Daniel was giving, given majesty. Oh, thou king, most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father the kingdom and majesty and glory. And all. Daniel basically reads in the riot act and tells him, you should, you should, your father trembled and feared, and you don't. And you think that you are uh, above God. Basically tells him this. Then he translates the writing on the wall. And guess what? It said, you're done. You're done, Belgezar. And that night, he was dead. Okay? And in chapter 6, the only other place it occurs, it's uh, talk Darius takes over. And Darius is, you know, a pretty good guy. He likes Daniel. You know, he's preferred above the, you know what I'm saying? But he, here come those magicians and those sorcerers again. And the astrologers, and they trick Darius into uh, proclaiming a decree that no one worship any god but him for 30 days. They know Daniel's going to worship his god. He does, and they turn him in. And so he has to throw him to the lions because that's what he promised. You know, he's got to follow his law. And uh, Daniel lives through the night proving his god is true. And Darius uh, has all these guys killed, <laughs> thrown to the lions. But then he makes another decree that in every dominion of his kingdom, men tremble and fear, okay, before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, steadfast forever, okay? 
And it's just funny to me because when you go back to chapter 5, this is just the stuff I see. After uh, Belshazzar dies, it says Dar Darius took over and he was three score and two years old. And this is just how my brain works. This is a confirmation for me. You got the 21 and the 212. Well, 222, two, two, I look at three score and two. So that was just kind of my confirmation that I was going down the right road here. So the writing's on the wall. That's my message. If you have money in these paper markets, this usury beast system, and your 401ks are growing and growing, just like they did 10 years ago, remember? And some people are living on the streets now due to that. A lot of people. And the same thing's going to happen. Disclaimer. I am not a financial consultant. Please seek uh, Jesus, preferably, for answers. Get your money out of the paper system, folks. That's all I can say. I I'm just saying. Take your money. Give it to the poor. Buy a piece of silver. Buy a piece of land. Help somebody out. I don't care. But don't give it to this usury, beast, wicked system. This is the root, folks. And it's coming down. It's coming down. And they're going to erect their new system. And there ain't going to be no way around it eventually. So you want to at least maintain some of the freedom of, of having what you own in your hands. You understand what I'm saying? Something tangible. Something, I don't know. I buy little pieces of silver when I can. And I do what I can for the, for the town and stuff, you know. But get out of the system. This is what I'm getting, folks. I'm not kidding you. It's and it's uh, it's pretty pretty hard and heavy that I'm getting. The writing's on the wall. It's on the wall. So seek Jesus, use discernment in all things, and peace and grace to you. Any fish. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, 